Meta and Fine at, at Harvard. She's at High Tech High now, I believe, but he's still at Harvard, Joel Meta, is talking about what they call symmetry. So teachers have to be supported in their needs and their, you know, they have to be agentic. They have to be, you know, more internally motivated in order to facilitate children to be that same way. And so, and so that gets to where you're at now, which is in teacher education is, is part of it is how do we ensure that the teachers are being supported too? So, so how, how do you see kind of taking it to that level of looking at the teachers and, and say, okay, how do we do that for them as well? Yeah. So it's so funny because I never, sometimes I don't make connections between all of the things that I do. <laughs> I, I, and, and, and this conversation is, is making me make connections, which is so good. So one of the things I do a lot of, right, is I do a lot of stress on self-care, self-care for academics, self-care for teachers, mm -hmm. self-care for parents and students. Yeah. And it's a very tangible way to take care of my teachers, mm. right? Because it's, it's those conversations on self-care that allow them space and time to see maybe where they're, they're lacking in self-care and mm. also where they're doing really well in caring for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. My teachers are doing a lot. They're doing a yeah, lot. Right. So the self-care portion of that conversation sometimes goes to the wayside, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes like what you think is self-care maybe isn't the best form of self-care, right? <laughs> like one of my teachers is like, I just want to sit down and watch TV and eat Doritos for three yeah, hours. Right? And I'm just like, I get it, right? <laughs> like I get that form of self-care, but it might not be the best for us, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, so I do, I do a ton of work on teacher self-care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just at the tip of that work. Mm because I talk about it in academic circles too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's harder than we think, right? Yeah. It's, we, we've got to take care of our teachers, but it's not just a financial care. It's not, it's an right. emotional and supportive care and people also have to take care of each other. So teachers also have to take care of other teachers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and administrators also have to hear this message too, right? Cause they right. not only have to take care of themselves, but also take care of those who work in their schools. And mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's easier said than done. It's yeah, easier yeah, said than that's done. That's for sure. And that, that gets at what you were just saying is that, that there also needs to be the same kind of symmetry needs to go continuously up the chain of command, so to speak, is that, that it's humans all the way up and all the way down. And yeah. so, and, and that's, that's where SDT, I think, is, is one of the most powerful tools or can, could be the most, one of the more powerful tools because it is humans all the way through. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.